my relationship with the rep is that I've done four uh, plays for the Imaginary Theater Company, and we're we're in the process of of, of, re, of revising and changing uh, the latest uh, play that I wrote, wrote for them called uh, a Greek Myths: uh, uh, Heroes and Monsters, and and one of the collaborators on that piece is here today, little Lydia Foss. Uh, <laughs> who uh, 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 the play was targeted for a fifth grade audience, and, and Lydia was in the fifth grade at the time. And so I, I, I gave her an early copy of the script uh, to look at because I wanted to know what a fifth grader is, is interested in. <laughs> and so, you know, she mentioned Snapchat and things like that. And I go, oh, yeah, okay, so I put those things in. Um, uh, I've, you know, I've been writing plays for quite a while and produced around the country nationally and uh, uh, every time I, I work with a different company or a different uh, director or producers, uh, it, 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 it's always a collaboration because your work, uh, you, know, you know, as a writer, as a playwright, uh, it's a little different than writing poetry or fiction because you send your poems out, your, your, your fiction out, and if an editor likes it, They'll pick it up. They'll publish it, and you'll and you might have a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, conversation with that person. But but with but with the playwright, the the play goes through a lot of hands. It goes through a lot of people eventually, and uh, it's uh, uh, a, a little different in, in 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 that you are really writing for a lot of different people who have a lot of different needs. You know, the most obvious, are, of course, are, are actors. You know, act actors need to be able to pick up the script. And they, you know, they need to be able to look at the part and be able to interpret it. And and you need to be able to, uh, if if they have problems with it, if there are things they don't understand in the script or something like that, you know, in the early development phase, you need to be able to sit with them and explain uh, this, you know, this or that, you know, element in the text. And and over time, um, uh, playwrights develop. Very close relationship with, with, with actors and, and directors who who um, uh, help help them develop their work. So, and this has been true since really the beginning of West, you know Western drama, you know you know with the Greeks all the way through Shakespeare all the way to the pr you know, present time. Plays are not written; they're rewritten and they're rewritten collaboratively. So there are a lot of people who are in, in involved in that process. Um, and so in, in the early stages of writing, I think it's really important if, if you're in interested in writing plays, and I know some of you are, um, <laughs> that, that you be aware of the fact that <clears throat> you, you are creating a blueprint. Really, the play is a blueprint that other people are going to take, just as an architect cre you know, creates the schematics for a structure. Uh, you, you are creating it. Uh, if you look at plays, say, that O'Neill wrote, or uh, um, Williams, you know, they're, they're they're much more descriptive than plays today. You know, plays today are re are very lean, mean storytelling machines. So a lot is left out of the play. A lot is uh, left up to interpretation of the director, the actors, and things like that. Uh, you know, in Shaw's time. Uh, he would specify that uh, Eliza is five foot four. She has brown hair, you know, chestnut colored hair, brown eyes, something like that. And it just won't fly today. No, you know, no uh, producer or director would cast just based on hair color. They, you know, they cast on talent. So you really leave a lot of things uh, open as you know as a playwright today. If you look at scripts today, they they really do look different than they did in Shaw's time. The big speeches are gone. The the detailed descriptions, uh, even weather, temperature, all all that is gone. Plays really um, are very very lean today, and I, I think it's Sarah Rule and other writers who are just brilliant, at, you know, at, absolutely brilliant at saying a lot with a little. I will tell you this: as a writer, your um, best tool is the imagination of the audience. So if you can give the audience a few clues, a few suggestions about relationships, about the past, or things like that, without hammering it, without overly describing everything, because um, I, I think that's your strongest tool, the imagination of the audience. Uh, in, in that sense, you're using nuance and suggestion 
you're teasing the audience into um, uh, uh, you know, collaborating with you. You know, when you, you know, the play is up on stage, it really is a collaboration between the writer, the actors, the director, the lighting designers, the costumer, and the audience, ultimately. Uh, because they're not just receiving the play, they, you know, they are participating. And I've been to enough uh, uh, plays and everything. You know, I mean, you stand in the back and you watch the audience respond to your play. And the audience helps shape the experience as well. So there, so there are a lot of components, you know, there are a lot of mo you know, moving parts uh, to uh, writing plays. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm giving you the encapsulated 16-week you know, playwriting seminar here. So, so bear with me. Um, uh, are there any things in, in you know, specific things that you, know, you want to talk about? Or? About the, the the art, the craft. Yes, ma'am. So if you have, um, say, an actual event that happened, um, and you're writing about that in a play, I mean, obviously you'll fictionalize it, but how true do you have to be? How accurate do you have to be to the setting, uh, the events, the time frame, all of that? Yeah. Well. Um, uh, uh, Picasso, I think, said it less, uh, best, uh, art tells a lie in order to tell the truth. So art tells a lie in order to tell the truth. Art, art is a lie. I mean, I mean, you go see, see, see a play, it's not reality, it's not a documentary, it's not really happening. So, but, but you're trying to elicit in, in the audience uh, a, a, a suspension of disbelief. And, and we've all had that experience. You go to a great movie, you go to a great play, you read a great story. And, and you're lost in it, and you, and you forget yourself in it. And that is the culmination of all these elements coming together that, that we just talked about, the collaborative elements and things like that. So uh, I, I would encourage you to be ruthless in, in your writing. If, if, if there's a detail that was really true, but it's uh, not salient, it's not telling, it's not engaging, Leave it out. Um, I mean, you know, art tells a lie in order to tell, you know, tell the truth. It gets to the essence, the essence of the experience. And so whatever you're writing about, get to the essence. Get to the truth of that moment and, and, and know your characters and everything else will, will fall in place. Everything else will fall in place. It will. Yeah, yeah. Well, recently the Aldi estate got criticized yeah. because of production of the Virginia Woolf and yeah. a lot of race taking What's your opinion on that? Well, when you're Edward Elby, uh, you can do anything you want. I mean, Ed, you know, Elby, Beckett, uh, a few other writers, even Sarah Rule, uh, were very upset at, at interpretations of their work that they didn't agree with and didn't like. And sometimes, in, in the case of Alby and Beckett, they would shut down those productions. They would begin legal action to shut it down because they didn't like the interpretation. Um, and uh, uh, most playwrights can't, can't do that. M most playwrights, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, you can't. You know, you, you know, if you've sold the rights or, or leased the rights for, for production to to X company, and then they do a version of, of your work that you don't like, um, that's that that's just it. That's just out there. Um, uh, Ayad Akhtar, Sarah Rule, a bunch of uh, you know, play, you know, playwrights like that. They were interviewed in New York Times a couple of weeks ago. It was a great. You know, article about that. Uh, when you write the work and it goes out in the world, how much control should you have over it? And, and in a lot of cases, very little, very very little. So, but again, it's it's interpretation, it's collaboration. Uh, you know, sometimes you go see a production of your work and you're just bowled over. It discovers new things about the work that you hadn't thought about before. And then other times you go, oh my God, this beautiful three-dimensional structure that I built is now a two-dimensional, you know, finger painting. Um, uh, <laughs> that's just part of the experience, you know, and, and I think, uh, I think um, that's just part of it. That's just, yeah. I, what can I say? <laughs> yes, sir. 
Um, how much does a person that's writing a play, um, how helpful is it to them to know as much as they can about acting? I think knowing a little helps a lot because uh, actors, first thing they do when they get the script, they go through, you know, where's my part, where, you know, where are my lines, you know, you know, you know they, and, and uh, you, you want to give actors uh, parts that are engaging and, and active and thrilling and, and you don't want to, over, again, you know, over explain the character. You want to leave room for the actor to interpret because they've all gone to acting schools like this one and they spent a lot of time and money learning the art and craft of acting and they don't want you to, to do their work for them. It's just like, you know, when you're writing the play, don't direct the play. Don't direct the play and don't try to act the play. You're, you're just giving the words, the structure out there for these people to come together and make it come to life. If you create wonderful, beautiful, true uh, characters that are engaging, the actors will want to do your play. They'll want to be in your play. So that, that would be my take on that. Yes, sir? Elaborate a little more on the collaborative process. And, uh, are you typically writing on commission uh, or in association with a, a group? And how does that? That happens a lot. Uh, I, 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 I do it a fair amount. A, a lot of people don't, but a lot of people do. Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago has produced some terrific playwrights. And uh, what a luxury, you know, for a playwright like, like Tracy Letts to have a company of actors. And, and you know, come in with an early draft and say, well, I'm thinking about this play. It's set in Osage County, uh, Oklahoma. It's a family. They come together for uh, a funeral. That, that's invaluable. That is really invaluable. Uh, the, the amount of feedback that uh, actors can, can, can give you in, in helping you shape the script is really invaluable. It really is. But then there are other writers, like Beckett, don't want anything to do with that. You know, you know, you know, you know they wrote the, you know, the, you know, the sacred word, and <laughs> it goes out there. So, so. It, it depends on your temperament, I guess, your, your, your style. Yeah, yeah. It's so. really important right now from a practical standpoint to write plays in a small cast because it's more difficult to get something bigger done. Uh, it, it is. It, it, it is very, very difficult to get large cast plays. Uh, produced. Uh, uh, I mean, there are exceptions, uh, you know, but but by and large, uh, theater is a very expensive proposition, uh, and so if you can write a gripping drama like *Disgraced* uh, with four actors, that that really is compelling and, and grabs an audience. Yeah, the, you know, theater is going to pick that up. You notice too, there are a lot of. Uh, two, you know, two-hander plays, uh, a lot of uh, solo performances now. Uh, it's just, it's, it's the ec economics. And I guess that's a, a part of the collaboration I, I didn't think to mention, is that economics play a big part in this as well. You know, s you know seasons are, are often determined on, well, we have X amount of money for the season, so we'll do one Shakespeare, and then we'll do a one-person show to balance it out economically. So. Yeah, yeah. It's challenging to uh, try to write a full-length play just using four actors or three actors. It, 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 it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Yeah. Yes? Where is your creative inspiration from? How do you get your ideas from? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a news junkie. So, so you know, whatever is going on in the news zeitgeist, I, I'm, I'm always uh, thinking about that and playing around with that. I think... Uh, it's shorter to material right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. This is, this is just, wow. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, to your point about uh, you know, cast size and th th things like that, there are a lot of playwrights now who uh, write for television. Uh, Netflix, uh, Hulu, uh, uh, Amazon, um, and uh, so, so uh, like um, Sarah Ream uh, is a great playwright, 
and writes small cast, very contemporary, uh, issue-oriented plays. Uh, and, and she also writes for uh, uh, House of Cards. So on stage, she's writing small cast plays that, that are just scintillating and brilliant. And for film or, or television, she's writing huge cast productions. You know, if you've ever seen House of Cards, there's, there's dozens of characters in, in that. So she gets the, the, the best of both worlds there. There, there are a lot of writers uh, who've, who, who go back and forth between uh, television and, and uh, stage. Yeah. Yes. What do you see for the future of live theater? Uh, I mean, it's a very different experience than a movie, and certainly different than television. Uh, do you see that expanding? Do you think the audience, we certainly have to be looking to younger people to fill the audience. What would you, have your crystal ball for the future of theater? Uh, it's been around for a long time, <laughs> I think, <laughs> and, and a lot of technology has come and go, not gone, but comes you know, since the 20th century, and uh, uh, I, I think it will persist, it will it'll continue on, and it'll change, it, it'll, you know, it'll evolve, uh, but, but ultimately, you know, as, matter, as good as Netflix is, or you know, Hulu, or anything like that, nothing really quite has that impact of a live performance that just knocks you out. When you're right there with the performer and something magic happens between the audience and the performer, it doesn't quite happen on television or in, in the movies. So, so I, think, I think, and once people have that experience, I mean, I, I, you know, I've seen it with students, you know, when they go to a show that just knocks them out, you know, they, they're, you know, they kind of get hooked, so. Yeah. You are right. Like, it's a very to read a whole bunch of different kinds of plays. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And go to shows. I mean, I mean we're blessed in St. Louis. We, we have a lot of theater here. Um, go. You know, and, and just see what's what's getting produced and how it's being produced, and and and, and be a, a good critic. You know, look at the elements of it and, and how it's put together. And uh, yes. The question was about seeing shows. <laughs> oh. About seeing theater and how valuable you think that is for playwrights. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go. Uh, uh, I think um, uh, when you know when you see a production that just astonishes you, like uh, a few years ago, uh, the Orange Girls. Anybody remember the Orange Girls? Oh, oh my God, they did a Sarah Rule play, um, uh, Eurydice. <coughs> And it just knocked me out. I was just like, it was so smart and interesting and engaging. And it's just like, you know, you just want to go home and, and, and write your own play. So, yeah. What is it about Sarah Rule that you seem to really like her? Well, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think she's, uh, uh, it, 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 in many ways, you know, tapped in, in, you know, into something with, with some of her plays. And, and she's been hugely successful. And uh, just using her as an example, because you know, the, uh, the rep has produced her, so I thought maybe some of you have seen um, any, you know, some of her work or anything like that. But, but there, there are dozens, if, if not hundreds, of really great writers producing work right now. Yeah, so. so you get the call from a company, from a theater that how it begins, or, or do you go out and sell your idea? Uh, um, well, in, in some cases, uh, a theater uh, contacts you and say, well, we, we'd like to commission you to do a work on this or that. Um, and, you know, and but most of the time, I'm, I'm sending my work out just like everybody else. So, so you're sending it to the O'Neill, you're sending it to, to, to contests or other theaters, you're, you're, you're marketing yourself, you know, if, and if you have an agent, you know, the agent's supposed to be doing that, or the agents tend not to. Uh, as soon as you get successful, they'll be beating down your door to, to be your agent. How important are they for the little class ones? Um, they can get you in the door, yeah. Uh, um. How important is the one, I'm sorry. Oh. Well, the festival's like, we have, a, we have readings here in St. Louis. Oh, like just here in Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah. Louisville does a pretty, a 
uh, well known. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They could really um, open doors for you, definitely. Uh, you know, get get your work read. I mean, at any given time, there's 20, 30,000 scripts just circling, looking for a place to land. So, uh, you know, the competition is is uh, uh, fierce out there. So, so getting a production or, or getting included in a festival or winning a contest, it's uh, uh, it's, it's 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 good. It's good. Um, I do think in this case, you know, competition makes the work better. Uh, you know, it is kind of a free market out there when it comes to writing. So, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, you know, cronyism, you know, will only get get you so far. I mean, I mean, if you're an actor, you have to be a really good actor to be successful and make a living at it. The same thing with writing. So, um, uh, yeah, marketing is a whole other aspect of the job that I don't particularly like, but. It's real, uh, yeah. So, 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 how many of you are writers? Want to be right? Oh, okay. okay. You written plays? Couple. Yeah. Okay. So, so, what was your experience like? Uh, the first one was a long time ago, and uh, I was in college, and uh, uh, we did a Canadian production. And then we decided to take it on the road, and we were too cheap to pay the um, royalties for the play that we did uh, in college. And so, uh, you know, they got co wrote uh, like a and here's Ops version of that yeah. script. And that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's another a, you know aspect of the business, uh, I, you know, is 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 writing it and producing it, and acting in it and doing it yourself. And and there's a fair amount of that going on in St. Louis. You know, folks that uh, Taylor Grunlow has his own theater, Tesseract Theater. Uh, he writes a lot of his own uh, plays that you know that he produces. And yeah, that, that that's one way to avoid <laughs> agents and contests and you know all, you know all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, right. Write, write and produce it, yeah. Well, my experience was I write fiction about a historical town in Ohio, and they were having their bicentennial a year ago, and they asked me to write a play for them. And fortunately, they had a group of actors who were called the courthouse players who were trial lawyers. And I found a, a, a Supreme Court decision where, where the leader of the town was sued and the entire deposition was in an Amazon book. Oh. And yeah. so, but but I couldn't just take the whole thing because it would be redundant, you know, trial lawyers and arguing and so forth. But it gave me exactly what to work with. Yeah. And 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 then I had a play reading group here in St. Louis and they read it. And then I'm just, you know, I'm saying, oh wait, that was way too much of that. Way too much of that. Mm -hmm. And finally we got down to it and now they've uh, they produce the play, and they also have, uh, it's now a book on Amazon. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, you, so you got some good collaborative oh, yeah. feedback. Oh, yeah. 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 So, okay, I mean, so yeah. Play. It's on the, it's, a, it's called Forever We Stand. Mm -hmm. And it's, you can buy it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, edit, yeah, editing skills are, are very important in, in this kind of work. Uh, you, you, I mean, you need to be able to t take you know, take the feedback and then edit your work and come back and, okay, let's try this version. Well, so. just listening to it, I thought, oh my God, that just went on and on. I mean, <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I, I more, it was more cutting things down. And the other thing, you're talking about what you don't put in a play today. The other thing is I have put in every actor that I know that I want to do a play of. And I have put in every actor that I know that I want to do a play of. They said, no, no, take all that out, and it just cleaned it up because it sets up to the actor and the director what those yeah. kind of things are. Yeah. And, and, and by trusting them, yeah. you yeah. make the work stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. What do you do if uh, the person you collaborate or you want to collaborate with, the director or whatever, is just tries to change too much? It, it gets away from your vision. Oh, you're right. trying to collaborate with 
what happens when they say, how about if the protagonist uh, is not a man or is a yeah. woman? Or, I mean, that might be okay, but what if it goes against what you're trying to do? Well, uh, I would, uh, uh, you know, you know, if you're at the point of a production and, and you're working with a director, uh, it, 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 I would uh, suggest joining the Dramatist Guild. It's, it, it's a nationwide uh, association of playwrights. Uh, it costs about $120 a year to join, or maybe $100. And they have legal advice, uh, free legal services uh, to help you with that. They also have sample contracts, and they have the Dramatist Bill of Rights. It's 10-point <laughs> Bill of Rights, and, and one of those points is that no one can change your script without your permission. And that's always, uh, you know, contracts that, that I do with theaters, it's, it, it, it's always there. And, and, and it's, it's, it's your insurance policy, uh, in, you know, going into the relationship that, yeah, they, you know, they could suggest cuts or changes or, or, or whatever in the script, but ultimately it's up to you to, uh, you, know, to you know, decide whether or not to do it. The Dramatist Guild, has been around since the 1930s, I think. Uh, Arthur Miller is one of the er, you know, early members. They're really a great organization, and they and they can help you get your work produced and uh, uh, help you know help you with a lot of legal and technical issues. So, so I would really, really suggest that, or I would suggest the Havis maneuver, named after my friend Alan Havis, who's a really great playwright, uh, who. Um, uh, at, he was doing a new play at the South Coast Rep, and they suggested a lot of changes. And he and he's a very diplomatic guy, so he said, oh yeah, I'll do that, oh sure, sure, sure. And he made subsequent changes that pleased the director, the producer, things, things like that. But by the end of the rehearsal process, when they got to production, it was back to the way he wanted it. He had very quietly finessed them. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, uh, diplomacy. Yeah, I mean, Oh gosh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I've I've worked with uh, directors who've had temper tantrums and uh, uh, never actors. Uh, act actors are great. I love I love actors. Uh, but but yeah, uh, uh, yeah. The, I mean, issues of ownership come up. Um, Oh boy! Uh, again, I would you know I would direct you to the Dramatist Guild. Uh, uh, remember too that when you write the play and it goes out in the world and somebody says, "Oh, I'd like to produce this," uh, you're not selling it. Uh, you know, you, you know, as in Hollywood, you sell a screenplay, which is why they get a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars for for screenplay. But with a play, the theater is just renting it and, and paying you royalties, for, you know, for the use of it. So, so it, you, you own it. It is your work, ultimately. It is your work, and you should have the final say. Well, I was thinking more on the level, though, you know, uh, early stages uh, of uh, maybe. It sounded like we were saying part of this uh, was showing her. We were exploring how you approach a theater company or, or uh, a director or something, and, uh, uh, as opposed to getting legalistic about it. Yeah. Well, that comes later. Yeah. I mean, I mean, a, a lot of theaters help develop scripts early in the process. The Rep does, you know, with the Ignite series and and other, you know, you know programs. So, so in those early stages, I, I think it's still important uh, to know your rights, uh, but also to be open to suggestions. Like, like if there's too much ex exposition, take it to heart, you know, edit and, and take advantage of that feedback. But, but. One of the things that the you know, Dramatist Guild has made plain is if you know, a director gives you feedback and you use it, they, they don't own a share of the script. You, you know, if an actor helps you, in, you, know, fi you know, figure out a character in a play and, and gives you, you know, suggestions for, you know, for lines or something like that, they don't get a percentage of you know, the play. You, 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 you do need to know your rights. Yes, no, we're, we're, we're done. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.